Freud's theory of psychosexual development states that as we grow, we go through five critical phases. Our sexual drive, which Freud called libido, focuses on a different hereditary zone at each phase. These phases are known as oral, anal, phallic, latency, and genital. If our experience in any of these phases is traumatic, we may develop fixations later in life, such as neuroses, dependencies, addictions, or depression. The oral phase occurs from birth to one year. In the first year of life, we discover the world through our oral senses. The main pleasure comes from sucking on the mother's breast or bottle. The conflict during this period occurs with weaning, when the primary caregiver moves away from Jose. Jose was weaned without trauma, but Pedro's mother weaned him very early, only four months after his birth. Maria was often left alone crying when she was hungry. Jose grew up healthy and independent. Pedro, however, suffered a trauma and developed an oral fixation. Compensating for this fixation, but chewing gum all the time. Maria spent her life seeking the oral stimulation that was denied her as a child, which led her to develop a manipulative and addictive personality. In the oral stage, from 1 to 3 years of age, libido focuses on controlling the bladder and bowel movements. The child learns to use the potty. Jose's parents praise his efforts and encourage him to learn at his own pace. His parents force early training and punish him for failures. Maria's parents, on the other hand, neglect his attempts to use the potty. Jose develops a balanced personality and a good relationship with authority. Pedro develops an analentive personality, becoming an overly controlling and mean adult, with an aversion to his own body and a tendency to submit to authority. Maria develops an anal and impulsive personality, becoming disorganized, disregardful of the feelings of others, and rebellious in the face of authority. In the phallic stage, from 3 to 6 years of age, libido focuses on the genitals as the child becomes aware of the differences between the sexes. The boy's conflict at this stage is his rivalry with his father. Also known as the Ed Complex, Pedro and Jose want to possess their mother and fantasize about getting rid of their father, but they know that he is stronger and fear being punished for this desire. Freud called this fear anxiety and castration. Maria experiences penis envy. She believes that the penis represents power and control, and she wants to possess it. Jose's father was very present during this phase. Later, E. Jose resolves this conflict by identifying with him, learning to adopt a masculine role. As an adult, he respects both centuries. Pedro, whose father was absent, fails to develop a strong sense of masculinity. He is fixated on his mother and is unclear about his sexuality, being aggressive with women and constantly competing with other men. Maria, like all women, maintains her penis envy throughout her life which causes her to have an inferiority complex in relation to men. In the latent phase, from ages 7 to 13, libido is repressed, as sexual energy is sublimated into practical skills. The superego becomes stronger and children identify with social values, heroes of the same sex, and also friends. Jose follows many hogs. Pedro dedicates himself to school and Maria makes several new friends. There are no major conflicts in this phase. Everyone benefits throughout life from the skills they developed during latency. In the genital phase, from puberty until death, libido becomes active again and interest in sexual partners increases. Jose, Maria and Pedro face the challenge of balancing the desires of the ID with the demands of the superego that govern social norms. 
The development of a strong ego helps to control a middle ground between these forces. Jose, who had a childhood without significant trauma, develops a robust ego. He is disciplined, has a loving relationship and a full sex life. Pedro's ego is weaker than his superego, causing him to stifle his desires, which leads to the emergence of perversions. Maria, with a weak ego and superego, prioritizes her sexual needs and ignores social norms, being selfish and guiltless for breaking the law or harming others. To understand this theory, it is necessary to place it within the famous work of Freud on the unconscious. He suggested that we store childhood memories and experiences without realizing it. These experiences then influence the unconscious, our behaviors in everyday life. Freud explained that the mind operates on three levels, the ID, which I will explain later, the superego and the ego. Young children are dominated by the ID, which seeks immediate satisfaction. In psychoanalysis and psychology studies, the ID is responsible for extinct organic impulses and unconscious desires. The ID has no contact with reality and can satisfy itself in fantasy, even if it does not carry out a concrete action related to that desire. The impulses of the ID can bring to the surface basic needs of the individual that have been repressed, for example, the child's sexual instinct which is often unaware of, because it is so repressed. The ID stores everything the individual has, all their needs that have not been satisfied. The ID is called the pleasure principle. Around the age of seven, we develop the superego and desire to be good moral citizens, pleasing others. The ego forms in adolescence to balance the two forces. Sigma Freud, an Austrian neurologist and founder of psychoanalysis, theorized that the unconscious stores all of our experiences and that they emerge from time to time through dreams and associations. By revealing traumatic memories and desires through conversations, we can free ourselves from our neuroses and live healthier and more fulfilling lives. Freud believed that instead of eliminating our complexes, we should come to terms with them, as they are what direct our conduct in the world. What do you think about this theory and Freud's own practice of psychoanalysis? Is there any truth to it? Do we really have an unconscious? If so, does it really store all of our childhood experiences and influence our behavior as adults? Share your thoughts below, if you'd like. To end this video, so that it doesn't get too long, let's make a few final considerations. Freud's psychoanalysis invites us on a profound and loving journey into the unconscious, revealing how our childhood experiences and the conflicts we have in our minds shape who we are in adulthood. By exploring the stages of development and the complexities we face, we are challenged to reflect on the invisible forces that govern our thoughts, desires and actions. Are we truly in control of our decisions or are we being guided by repressed memories and unconscious impulses? Understanding these dynamics is not just an intellectual pursuit, but an opportunity for self-knowledge and transformation. Psychoanalysis offers us the tools to confront our deepest fears, resolve internal conflicts and, in this way, achieve a fuller and more authentic life. Freud's invitation is used to challenge us to look within ourselves and accept that in order to understand our behaviors and the choices we make, we must delve into the shadows of our unconscious. Ultimately, it is this understanding that will allow us to live in a more conscious and balanced way, thus aligning our desires, behaviors and relationships. Now we want to know, are you ready to face the truth that resides in your own unconscious? 
Are you willing to explore the depths of your psyche and free yourself from the chains that limit your potential? The journey is difficult, but the reward is transformative. Thank you very much for liking our videos, commenting on our videos, sharing our content. I am grateful to all of you who follow us. A hug and until next time.